In the 20 years that I've been studying sex differences in the brain at the University of Maryland, I've found that people are always fascinated by anything that has to do with differences between males and females, and they always transfer it to differences between men and women. It's a topic everyone has an opinion on. And here when we talk about something that's so uh, human, so specific to humans, our language, I think that gets people even more excited. There are studies that have shown that women do use more words in a given day than men do. And then there's also very interesting studies in children, which are not so biased by our adult environment and our adult experiences, that shows that girls become verbal sooner than boys. And when they do become verbal, they have a more complex vocabulary than boys. And this happens at the age of about four to five, six years old. Well, we looked at a particular gene called FOXP2 and so we realized that it's really critically involved in the areas of the brain that are involved in communication whether that be song such as in birds or ultrasonic vocalization such as we recorded in our rat animal studies or in speech and language in humans and so we looked at that gene in the brains of four and five-year-old boys and girls, and there we found that the gene is expressed at a higher level in the girls than it was in the boys. So this is the first time that a sex difference in this language gene had ever been reported. Deficits in speech and language are really devastating to an individual. They're very isolating, um, and they can impair one throughout life. And there are certain other conditions such as, say, Klinefelter's, for example, in which boys have an extra X chromosome, and they have severe speech impairments as they're growing up, and they often wind up in speech therapy. And if we could find out things about the genetic control of speech, we might develop new therapeutics. Also in disorders such as autism, dyslexia, stuttering, these are all disorders that involve severe impairments in language and in communication, both in producing speech and in understanding language from others. So the more that we understand about how it's controlled at both the genetic and hormonal level, the better off we are.